So, Isabel, why don't you go first to talk about your uh, experiences at the conference? Hi, everyone. Um, like Dr. Webb said, I'm Isabella Morales. I am a senior history and American studies double major. Um, I also am fortunate enough to be a part of the McNair cohort from 2010-2011. Um, and I guess I could talk about my particular research project until they pull me off stage with a hook because that's, that's all I do, I talk about my research. Um, briefly, I do American history, 19th century, a lot with reconstruction, so ideas of race and gender in the um, directly post-Civil War period in the South. Um, so that's what I'm interested in. I'll be studying that in grad school next year and for the next seven-year sentence of my uh, PhD program. Um, I have given oral presentations at the last two undergraduate research and creative activity conferences here at UA. I also, as a member of the McNair Scholars Program, had the opportunity to present at a research conference at UC Berkeley this last summer. And while I won't go into great detail about it, all I want to say is that it was one of the most terrifying and simultaneously amazing experiences of my life, um, standing in front of 300 smiling faces like yours, so I'm not afraid of the camera. Kind of actually, I kind of still am. Um, a little bit. <laughs> but it, the point is that I wouldn't have been able to do that at all um, if I had not gotten the professional experience that I did presenting at the two um, undergraduate research conferences here that I participated in when I was a sophomore and last year when I was a junior. When I was a sophomore, that was the first time I had ever given a major presentation outside of a classroom, so not for a grade. And of course, when you stand in front of a room of strangers and a couple of them judges with very official looking clipboards and kind of like frowning at you going like this, you know, what's she going to talk about? Um, there's that moment of fear when you wonder why would anyone care about what I'm doing, especially when you've looked through the abstracts and you see science students um, or engineering students who are studying something like nanotopographical tennisite <laughs> substrates, and I might be making up words, I'm not sure because I don't understand it, and I am here doing humanities research. Um, but after you think, why would anyone care? I guess what I learned is that you have to make them care, and obviously I am clearly a humanities student because I'm talking about feelings and caring and emotion, and I would say that research is not all about, about the, the cold embrace of the scientific method. Um, I wouldn't be doing what I am if I believed that that was the only kind of research that was legitimate. Um, it's also not the fact that you can put this on your resume, although it looks very impressive to say that as an undergraduate, I presented my research at a conference. For me, it's more that you have the opportunity to share something you're passionate about, something that you've dedicated countless hours to, and something your friends are probably sick of hearing you talk about, or your family just, you know, your mom will hang up on you because all you're talking about is, look what I found in the microfilm annex today, mom. It's like, I don't care. Um, these people are here watching your presentation, maybe judging your presentation, and your job is to make them care. And it's not necessarily just about the specific details of your methodology. It's about bringing that passion and showing that this is why I'm doing what I do. This is why it's important. And the best case scenario is that you can infuse that audience with a tiny fraction of the enthusiasm that you feel. Because obviously, you're not getting a grade for any of the research you're doing. And you're probably not doing it um, to put it on the resume because putting yourself out there and speaking to a group of people, whether you're doing an oral presentation like I've done or a poster presentation that I have not done. Um, I have no skill with graphic design. The poster would be a nightmare, so that's why I'm just gonna stick to talking. Um, the point is that you are not just talking about your research. You are showing people why you are interested in a topic and why you are dedicating yourself to that topic. Um, obviously, however, completing an original research project is a great accomplishment, especially for undergraduates. But it doesn't do anything unless you are able to communicate that research to a wider audience. And that's what I personally think the purpose of these academic conferences is. Uh, the spring conference here at UA is structured similarly to the Berkeley one I attended, um, other conference I've attended at other universities. 
I can only speak to the oral presentation side because as I've said, I have not per, um, done a poster presentation here before. The way that works is, or has worked in the past, is that you submit your abstract and your topic online and you're asked in the online form to categorize your research. The history department here is counted among the social sciences, so social scientists, I'm coming for you again. Um, that's where I'm placed, which means, say, you're, you're studying history, uh, you might be in a room with psychology majors, anthropology students, poli-sci, some criminal justice students, just depending on how the conference organizers categorize the students. Because you want to be in a room where the people who come to see you might also be interested in something that one of your peers is presenting, that you would possibly also be interested in. It might not be your same topic. I was the only history major um, in my, I guess, division or room last year, but it's a similar genre of research. So it's something that would hopefully be interested, uh, interesting to a wider community. You're directed into that room. Usually, in my experience, there's been six or seven other students who present in that same room with you. Um, you get about 12 minutes to give your presentation of your research, usually with a PowerPoint, um, and then three minutes to answer questions. And that's my favorite part, answering questions, because it forces me to get away from a prepared script and also gives you the opportunity to, if there's time, ask yourself a question. Um, not in the, you know, politician way that I'm going to spin this question around so that I look good, but in the way that there might be something interesting about your research, something that you really wanted to bring up or that strikes you as fascinating that doesn't quite make the final cut of your PowerPoint. On that note, PowerPoints, uh, I know professors, and I'm sure you all know professors, who will fill screens like this with just dense blocks of text that you cannot possibly take down um, and notes while you're writing in the time given. And we will forgive them because, unlike many of us, not all of the senior members of our faculty were born with computers at their fingertips. Um, so that's okay. Like, cut them some slack. But there's no excuse for an undergraduate student to have a, a PowerPoint that's, you know, white, filled with text. And it's a disservice to yourself because you want to be the one who is imparting that information. I, my advisor, Dr. Shaw, has always said that the PowerPoint should supplement your talk rather than supplant it. So you want to have information. You don't want to be reading off of it because then it looks like you don't know your stuff. And obviously you do, because you have put this effort into it and you want to put yourself in the best light possible. That brings me back to my central point, which is basically when you give a presentation, you have all the power and you can blow the audience's minds if you just show them not necessarily only what you've done, but why you do it. Because students who are undergraduates who are giving research presentations are the minority not a lot of your classmates are going to be willing to stand in front of total strangers and <coughs> tell people that in my spare time I am in Gorgas writing about Reconstruction Era gender roles in Leavenworth, Kansas because a lot of people are doing that work and it, it's highly impressive but it's also a service to the wider community that you are discovering new things about the world and the human experience. And I know that sounds very lofty language, but it's possible to contribute even in a small way to the body of knowledge that we have. And that's um, always what I've hoped my research helps to do. Um, just in terms of, as Dr. Webb mentioned, I was very, very pleased to win the Library Digital Collections Award. And that just makes me want to note that the libraries here at UA have so many resources. Um, and this doesn't even necessarily have to do with your research, but if you log into the library website with your um, student account, you can get, you can use the full uh, Ancestry.com database, so you can become your family's genealogist, even if you are a bio, bio major, because all that's available. Not to mention, I will also plug Hool Library, where I spend most of my time. Late nights at Hool on Thursdays, right? Like, so much fun, guys. <laughs> it's so fun. Um, in any case. I should probably stop talking because I'm starting to embarrass myself. <laughs> the fact is that when you're doing work that is original, that's creative, and that's not for a grade, you are you know, really standing out from among your students. And the passion that you bring to it translates across all areas of study and all disciplines. And I hope that helps. Our next
next speaker is Emily Jones, who is in aerospace engineering and worked with Amy Lang. As you said, I'm uh, Emily Jones, I'm in engineering, and I participated in the poster part of this uh, competition for the past two years. And um, it was a really great experience. I think that a poster is pretty different from getting up and speaking in front of a group of people because it gives you the opportunity to speak to one person and make a one person connection. Um, with your research. And my research is involves uh, shark skin and how the, the scales on the skin uh, affect the flow of water around the shark, which can get pretty technical, even among engineers. There's such a wide variety of engineering that uh, not everyone is fully versed in fluid dynamics. And so being able to stand with one person and, and talk to them about exactly what you're doing and how that's meaningful in the process and and being able to form that connection and get that understanding and boil it down to as simple as you need to get it to talk to one person about it. It's just, it's a really fun experience. Um, I love it uh, so much. I mean, I enjoy giving a presentation in front of people, but it, it's much more fun to talk to one person. It doesn't feel like it's a presentation as much. And I'd like to encourage everybody uh, about the, the quality <coughs> of the research, well, not the quality, but the, the amount of research that you have to have done in order to submit a poster. Um, at the point I was last spring, I, I didn't have any results, except for a couple of uh, test runs that we had done that seemed to counteract the hypothesis we were going with. So the only results I had to present to these people who were coming to talk to me was that we can't even begin to prove what we think we're going to be able to prove. We haven't taken any data that seems to suggest that what we know what we're talking about at all. And they didn't seem to mind too much. So I, they gave I, you a prize. They gave me a prize. So maybe it's not, it's the presentation of the research more than the research itself. Because it didn't really have much on my poster. It was a very pretty poster, I thought, but it didn't contain a whole lot. And, and it's so much more about talking to the person and making the connection than what's written on your poster. Because you'll, you'll know when they walk up to you that they don't have time to read the entire poster. They'll just look at it. and and look at the figures and make sure that you have everything on it that your, a good poster would have on it. And it'll turn to you and say, tell me about it. So that's a, a good thing to know that when you're, you're thinking about formulating your poster. Uh, the, the conference is a great experience. You don't even necessarily know which of the people that come to talk to you are the judges. I mean, sometimes you'll know because they're the ones with the clipboards. But then some other people have clipboards and they're just taking notes. And some of your professors will come by and just stand next to your poster and get to talk to one person at a time. So it's a, it's a great experience. I encourage everybody to do it. Does anyone have any questions about a poster contest? I don't know how many of you are going to do that and what sort of experience you have. We can be thinking of questions as we go along, and we'll come maybe come back at the end, and, and people will have some questions to ask. All right. Does anyone have anything else to say? Good. Thank you. And Jessica Duke <coughs> is in chemistry and worked with Dr. David Dixon. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica. Um, I'm a chemistry and math major working in Dr. David Dixon's computational lab. And uh, for three years now, I've been studying carbon sequestration, which is the storage of carbon dioxide underground to prevent its escape into the atmosphere and all the effects it can have, like global warming and other environmental effects. Um, so what we do in my lab is we model chemical reactions between carbon dioxide and other chemicals that it might encounter underground, like water and minerals, to see if um, we can store the carbon dioxide underground safely over the long term. Um, and so I would say um, three really important things that you uh, should take into a research conference with you, and these are three things that helped me win an award in the research conference is one, be able to explain to people why you're doing what you're doing. Because I can talk about all the technical aspects of my research all day, but no one's really gonna care, especially if they're not in my department, if I don't tell them why it affects them. Um, so for example, um, one example that I like to bring up from my research is um, there's a lake in Cameroon that periodically um, um, produces a giant bubble of CO2 that escapes from this lake and just um, kind of sits over this town, um, and CO2 is denser than air and it's odorless and clear. So 
um, every so often this little bubble, or this giant bubble I guess, just kills thousands of people in this town. <coughs> and so that's something we don't want to happen. Carbon um, sequestration is already in progress, but we need people to know that it's, or we need to know that it's safe before the process becomes widespread. So that's one example I like to bring up is why this might affect you. So um, that's something you would take into the conference with you. Also, um, I would say choose between poster or oral presentation based on your strength if you have the option. Like Isabel said, that um, she really likes speaking in front of people. She likes to have a lot of control over her presentation. And she seemed really comfortable behind the podium. So if you're comfortable with that, I would say go for that because that gives you a lot of power over your presentation. You can just prepare your presentation, give your speech, and maybe worry a little bit about question and answer, but most of all, you have control. Um, but if you're more of a quiet person like I am, like I don't really like talking to a room, I'd rather talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one, then I would say a poster is a really good thing. And you can prepare a two to three minute speech, um, but also with a poster it means you kind of have to think on your toes because um, I know a lot of times I would have my little two minute speech prepared perfectly and a judge would come in and I would start talking and two seconds in they would point out something on my poster and be like, well I want you to tell me about this. So you have to kind of think on your toes and you have to know your presentation and your research really well. Um, the third thing that I would say that was also really important is don't put any data on your poster um, that you don't know how to explain. So make sure you know every single thing about your poster. And this is a common problem in my lab because we do computational studies and we produce a lot of numbers. So a lot of kids will put all of their numbers on their poster um, and they'll know pretty much overall what they're doing, but they may not know like what one single number means. And of course the judge picks that number to ask about and they're like, well, I really don't know. That's just part of my data, I guess. So I would say if you're going to put something on your poster, make sure you know what it means. Um, and you can probably talk to your research advisor about this or, or not or whatnot. And um, if, you, if you don't know what it means, if you're not going to know what it means, I would say leave it off. And also just make, uh, make your presentation look good. Like Isabel said, um, you don't want to have a lot of text because no one's going to be able to read it. Um, I would say balance pictures and text, maybe alternate them. Um, make the lines clear, just make it look good. That's going to make your presentation look professional and make you seem more professional and your research seem you know, more professional overall. So that's all I have. Good.